Well, hello there, friends. Finally, that video I've been promising you for a long time, how to chop and dice most of the vegetables we use on the channel. Underneath the video, you'll see a link that says show more. Click on that link and you'll have a listing by alphabetic order of all the vegetables we chopped and diced today for you. Check it out. If you want to do celery, click on celery and you'll see how we chop and dice the celery. If you cannot, if you cannot click on the uh, show more, you can go to our website at chefjp.com or chefjeanpierre.com. Click on the vegetables and they will also be there listed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you again with another fantastic video in the next couple of days. Asparagus. Number one, try to buy big ones. They taste a lot better. They're a lot easier to handle than the little skinny one. Those are difficult. Also, when you buy an asparagus, I want to show you. This is a fresh asparagus. This is an old asparagus. This is one I bought today. This is one I bought 10 days ago. As you can see, the bud is all open. It's not fresh. This is no good. This is good. What, how do we do it? Well, first of all, you want to peel them, my friend. Take yourself a nice peeler and go gently from about three-quarter on the top, three-quarter on the top, and peel them. Very simple. Okay? And then you see a lot of people that tell you, break the asparagus. Break the asparagus. Where do you break it? You break it here, you break it here, you break it here, you break it here. Where do you break it? Wherever you do that, it breaks. You don't need to break it. All you need to do, my friend, is cut the bottom. If you look, look at the bottom. How dried up it is, right? So you cut the bottom, kind of like a flower. And now you can rehydrate it easily. Okay, what else do we do with this? We can certainly poach it like that, grill it like that, oven roast it like that. We can do so many recipe, or you can stir fry it. And to stir fry, I like to cook it. I put this in water, cook it first, put this at the end. Very simple. That's for asparagus. Green beans. Now, these vegetables probably doesn't need much of an introduction. It's got to be the easiest vegetables in the world to cook, friends. I don't do much to them at all. Now, mo most I do, really, is I cut the ends off. Uh, but I leave this guy right here, especially if I'm going to cook the whole thing. I think they poach beautifully, poach them in boiling water, then put up in ice water so they, you keep the color nice and neat, and then you saute them. You can do all kind of cool things with them. Or you can cut them in little pieces like this. Just give them a little shape so they look kind of cool. All right? Just make them give them a little bit of a shape. And let me tell you, friends, let's make sure we cut the right end. They are delicious also in salad, cut very small. Yeah, very small, very small, very small. You cut them in salad like that, let me tell you, friends. They are delicious. They are absolutely delicious. And a nice surprise crunch in, uh, in, in the salad. Otherwise, push them all. All you basically have to do is to make sure you clean the end, and voila. <laughs> Told you they need much of an introduction. Green beans, the easiest vegetables in the world to cook. Bell peppers. So many recipes with bell peppers. So there are so many ways to handle it, for friends. Um, if you're a professional chef, you're going to cut the, the, the top off. Um, at home, you want to be comfortable. You're going to go. Remember now, your knife has to be super sharp with one of those. If it's not, you may want to get your uh, kind of serrated knife to do it. But you cut the top off. Now, when I cut the top off, I like to clean this up after this and, and do a little more cleaning in there. So what I do is uh, I cut side of it. Very simple. See? Very, very simple side. And I don't waste the end. That, of course, I throw away. And this, you can take your peri knife and you can clean it. Now, if you remove the core at the beginning, then you don't have to do this. But otherwise, this is a way to handle it. I sure like to remove all the seeds. I also like to leave to remove the white membrane. What I do, I take the white membrane, I go to the left or to the right of it, and I cut straight. And then I take my paring knife, and then I remove it. Same deal here. And then remove it. So now, if it's too much, I remove it. The white membrane doesn't test very good, friends. You try it. You see if you like it. I don't like it. So 
Let's cut it in so many different ways we can cut the bell peppers. One thing is for sure, friends, we always want to make sure we cut with the skin side down, never up. So sometimes you may need a big dice of bell pepper, which means you do a big julienne, then you take and you cut in big dice. I doubt very much you're going to ever use a bigger dice than this. But you could in some recipes. I hardly ever use them that big. Now we're going to do a medium dice. That means we need to make a medium julienne. Now remember how we're using a knife. Okay, we're going to do a video on knife as well. We have now a medium julienne. Then we take and we cut into a medium dice. Some people may think this is small. This is actually a medium dice. Now we're going to do a small dice and a small dice means we're going to get a smaller julienne take a smaller julienne and we're now going to cut it into a smaller dice this is probably for a salad or something you're not going to cook this is the perfect small dice now, without being too technical, we can do a brunoise. A brunoise is the thinnest dice you can possibly make. And for the brunoise, I like to have a very thin a bell pepper. Otherwise, I can't cut. So I remove a little bit of the white membrane. You notice my knife is flat. Make a brunoise, that means we're going to make very small, very thin julienne very 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 small and very thin julienne you see well your finger hardly moves now we take this again it's always the about the julienne before you make a dice you make a julienne you make a slice and you take your slice you take it into a julienne and you take your julienne and you make it into a dice and right here my friends we have ourselves what is called a brunoise. And a brunoise is something you put on top of a pasta, on top of a pizza, on top of a salad. It's something that doesn't require to be cooking, especially for a bell pepper. Certainly don't need it. And here we have a friend. We have our three, not you over there. There's one of them doesn't belong in there. I'm gonna put it in here. And now we have our three basic cut without getting too technical about the different size of it. Now you also see me sometimes using a julienne of bell peppers in a recipe, which means we're still removing the white membrane. And now when you see some of the recipe that we do and you see a julienne of bell pepper, then you'll know. We first make a slice, then we make a, a julienne and a julienne. And we leave it sometime, I find, then the julienne. You can certainly leave it like this in a recipe if it's going to cook for a while, or you can cut it in half. More often than not, I do that. Now, every so often, I may leave the julienne whole, and I kind of give us all of the basic cut you can make with the bell peppers, except this, I don't throw it away. I try not to throw anything away, and I basically do the same thing. Now, of course, the fact that it is round it's not always easy but if i'm doing a stew or something i'm not really too concerned about the size of it to be exact and, uh, and you may want to just roughly chop it you see and some in, in in a stew this will be perfectly fine you see perfectly fine in a stew friends rough chop and here we have it we broke down the whole bell pepper it's just a few minutes and this, my friend, is an introduction to how to cut the perfect bell pepper. Bok choy. This is actually a, a baby bok choy. Sometimes they come really, really big. Same principle, right? So what we do is, the uh, first thing we want to do, friends, is we want to remove the leaves because they cook at a different speed than the, um, than the root end speed. And then... Uh, depends what it is you do with it. What I do is I roll them and I chop them in 
rough chiffonade. That's a wonderful way to do stir fry with it. Okay? But this guy right there, or you can poach them the same way you're gonna do this. First thing we do is we remove the roots. Removing the roots, that releases them. You see? It releases them. And as you get closer, you do the same again. You remove the root, and it releases the leaves. So now, at this point, friends, you really, really have to wash them. You see? They have a lot of sands in there. So you wash them, and then depends what it is you're going to do with it. You cut them like this. Remember, if you are going to do this, this right there, put them on top of each other. Makes it easy. Depends the size here. Remember, now those are going to take longer to cook than those. So you put those in your stir fry before you put those. And that's how you handle bok choy. Broccoli. Wonderful. Look at those. Here's what we're going to do. When we do the broccoli, friends, we come, we start with the trunk. The trunk, the stalk of the broccoli. And, uh, and we start climbing up and cleaning it up. So what we do, we remove what's in the bottom first. We turn around. We remove the floret. And the florets are made with um, undeveloped flower buds. And we clean the trunk, the trunk, the stalk, call it the trunk. And uh, we clean it. We continue cleaning. You see, look, we continue cleaning. As we turn around, the first one that comes, we clean it. That means we do not break. We do not cut the floret unless we have to. Sometimes you may have to. You see, we clean it up. We keep going. We keep going. You see? We keep going. And then we keep going. And we may have right now a floret that is perfectly fine. Okay? So if it's too big, then you can do the same again. You see? You can go in and do it again and do it again and do it again. And then you want to clean it up. And now you have yourself a sizable floret. You see? So you don't want to cut it. If you cut those uh, undeveloped flower buds, they're going to be all over the place. This is really what you want to eat. If it's too big for you, just keep going. You see? Keep going. And if you end up having a big one and you can't do anything about it, then you, you clear it up and you may have to cut it in half. But this is all edible size right there. Now, what do we do with this guy? <laughs> a lot of people throw that away. Let me tell you, there's more flavor here, friends, than there is in those guys. Okay? So what do we do with this? We make sure... It is fairly clean, fairly clean. The last thing we want to do for certain, we want to remove the root, that dry root right there. We'll remove that, and that goes in the garbage. So far, you have noticed, I, haven't, I don't have much garbage. This is from the other one. I don't have much garbage at all. Now, the idea, friends, is to peel this guy, to peel it. So you get a nice peeler, and you go this way, clean it up as much as you can, and then you go the other way. You see? Peel it the other way. Sometimes it's a little hard. Let's clean this out of the way. Always nice to have a clean work surface, friends. And now we're going to take our knife, and now we can cut this. Boy, it's hard. <laughs> we can cut this. And believe it or not, my friends, you'll enjoy eating this as much, if not more, than eating your floret. What do we, how do we cook this? Well, of course, we'll poach them in boiling water, but we poach this guy first. And when this is almost done, then you put this one at the last minute. And this is how you handle broccoli. Brussels sprouts, they're wonderful. Mm, I know a lot of you don't like them, but they're quite special. So what do we do with them? Not much. We have a, um, a, a root, so we remove the root. And a cool way to eat them, believe it or not, friends, is to remove the leaves from... When you cut the roots, it's easy to do. You see? You cut the roots, it's easy to do. And you do it gently so you don't break them. Right? And then when you're done with this layer, you cut a little bit more and you can remove another layer. And now, those leaves are amazing. At the end, you poach them. You put them in boiling water and you put them in ice water. Wonderful way to do it. These guys right there, you can 
Put them in boiling water, and I like to put a little sugar in there because sometimes they're very bitter, and you can roast them, you can pan fry them, you can do a lot of things with it. And if they're really, really big, what I like to do, oh, stay here, you. If they're really, really big, I cut them, and then I cut them right in half. Easier to cook, remove the outer layer, like you would do for a regular cabbage, and I find they cook a lot faster, and they're wonderful to roast that way also. All right? This is Brussels sprouts. And that's about enough squash. <laughs> Phenomenal. They look strange, don't they? And you know, they're difficult to cut. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. This is perfect. So, uh, first thing we gotta do, friends, is we gotta peel them. Unless you wanna roast them in the oven. Now what you do, you take your knife, you prick a couple of holes in here, like go all the way through, or a big fork, and you pop it in the oven, and you can cook it without cutting it. But if you want some nice chunk, then you can saute and caramelize for soups and, and different dishes. Then you want to peel it and you want to cut it. All right? So let's do it. So what we do, we take a vegetable peeler. You hold it tight, tight, tight. And you just peel it. You see? And that's all you do, friends. Okay, now, now that it's peeled, let's clean up a board and let's cut it. Don't grab them when they're too big, they're difficult to handle. First thing we're gonna do for right now, you gotta be very strong now, and you're gonna cut the ends. And you're gonna cut both ends. Be very strong when you do this. Firm, 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 friend. Then you're gonna cut the bulb, the bulb right there. That's the bulb. And you're gonna cut it in half. And you're gonna take a spoon and you're gonna clean the seeds. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna cut them in slices. It's easier to manage if you cut them in slices. All right? Now we're gonna take a spoon and we're gonna remove the seeds. And when they're very fresh, you really got to go in there and dig, friends. You got to really dig. And now what we're going to do, we're going to cut in slices. And we're going to take our slices. And we're going to cut them in dices. Same deal with this. Cut them, and if they're too big, cut them in half. And you got yourself beautiful dices. You can roast them, you can put them in soup, you can put them in, make some beautiful sauces with it. You can do all kinds of things. And friends, this is how you handle the butternut squash. Boy, it, it looks impressive. First thing I do, you know, no matter what, I always remove the first layer or two. Because usually everybody has touched them. They're dirty, so I just remove them. All right, we got rid of those guys. What I'm in here. And then what I do is I take my uh, paring knife and I remove a little bit of the core. Just a little bit of a core. Now, this is dangerous, so be careful, friends, okay? If you're not used to handle a paring knife like that, be very careful, okay? Remove a little bit of it. And then what we do, friends, now we have a, a, a sturdy surface, we're gonna cut it in half. You gotta really be strong when you do this. Hope you ate your winnies today. All right, so now we have a half of a, uh, a cauliflower, a cauliflower. <laughs> what we're gonna do, <laughs> cabbage, I just did a cauliflower. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna cut it in half again, friends. But you gotta be strong, boy, I'll tell you what. And now right there, friends, you see, you have a, uh, this one is not too bad. Normally the heart goes all the way out there. Now what you wanna do, you wanna remove it right there. Boom, now you're ready to go. At this point, friends, you can really easily shred it, just like this, be very simple now. You can shred it all you want, or what you could do, my friend, this, this is an easy way to do shredded cabbage, you could also take 
your quarter, and you want to, again, you can cut them in half again. And you can actually bake it just like this. You don't have to do nothing. You can bake it just like this. That's another fantastic way to, to do the cabbage. Or you can shred it very thin for a, a stir fry, for a saute. We're going to put it in here. And now, be very careful. This is the mandolin. But the mandolin, the mandolin will give you the thinnest possible cut, you see? If you want to make a, a coleslaw, be careful now. It's very difficult to use the guard with those because they're like, they're not. And what I do is I take it and I flip them on the other side, you see? Be very careful, be firm, my friends, when you do this. And that's, I hope you can see this. This is another fantastic way of handling the cabbage. At the end of the day, cabbage is very simple. Or we shred it, or we leave it in here and we bake it. And uh, that's about it. So this, friends, is the way I handle cabbage. Carrots. You lot of recipe with carrots. So I peeled a few of them, but I wanted to show you, not that anybody needs to learn how to peel a carrot, but I've seen so many professional cooks doing it the wrong way. Hold your potato, your, your potatoes. Uh, all your carrots uh, by the root end and go straight, easy, all the way down. But don't try to get it all the way there because what you're going to do, right? We got it so far. What you're going to do now, you're going to flip it on the other side and just finish it. As easy as it is, you would be surprised at how many people are doing it wrong. They try to do the whole carrots at once and then they peel a little bit of their fingers. Of course, we're going to remove the ends. So many things we can do with the carrots. So many recipes we can use for the carrots. It's easier if you're going to make dice, if you're going to make um, a julienne with the carrots. It's easier if you get a big carrots. They're not always easy to find, but you take the big part of the carrot if you're going to dice it. So what we're going to do, we cut, and now we're going to make some dice out of this. And remember, when you make a dice, no different than the potatoes. You want to make sure you get rid of this side. You want to make sure then your carrots doesn't move. So you cut, so it's flat. You get rid of the round part of the carrots. I don't throw this away, I use it in stock. So now what we're gonna do, friends, we're gonna cut uh, slices, then we can cut in julienne, then we can cut in dice. If you wanna make a small dice, then you gotta cut a small slice, you see? All right, now we got our slices. We can take our slices and we can cut them in julienne. Sometimes you can do them when they're on top of each other. Sometimes you count. And this is round, we're gonna leave it there. So we got ourselves some perfect julienne. We can leave them like that or we can cut them in dice. And all we have to do to cut them in half, you take about half of it and, and you hold them together and you have yourself some little dice. You can certainly make them smaller in brunoise, but it's not often that you need a brunoise of carrots. The size of the slice determines the size of your dice, if you're gonna make dice. Carrots, we can certainly use them in so many different ways. You probably uh, heard of the roll cut, and the roll cut is when you roll your carrots. You cut it in a bias, then you roll it, and then you get this kind of cut. You get this kind of cut. So if you want to roll it, you can roll it, or you get this kind of cut, which is kind of cool if you're making a, um, a stew or thing, or you can take your knife and go down, and you still get the roll cut. You see? You still get the same roll cut. The size of your roll cut, it's based on how long you're gonna cook the carrots. If you have a recipe like a stew, then it's gonna, a chicken stew, then it's only gonna cook for uh, a few minutes, like uh, uh, 45 minutes, you could, this way. If you have beef stew, it's gonna cook for two and a half, three hours, you may wanna make them bigger than that. Then you can have fun with the carrots also. You can take a big side, and, um, and you can take one of those um, uh, a channel knife, and you can cut channels, out of it. I've, I've done that in a few recipes. You guys have probably seen it. Some of you that are watching the channel on a regular basis. And you cut little channels. 
again, great material for stock. I always clean my cutting board, it makes it easier. And then we'll go up and down, and we've got carrots, then looks kind of cool. Really simple. All right, we'll make it simple now. Bigger the carrots, easier it is for you to make those beautiful uh, um, uh, little uh, wheels or whatever you want to call it. And that, friend, is a quick little introduction to cut carrots. Now, if you want to cut them straight, of course, there's nothing wrong with giving the carrots an angle. And you get yourself also an angle cut, which is pretty simple, easier to do than a roll cut, and looks kind of cool as well. So many different cuts you can do with the carrots. Have fun with it. Cauliflower. Friends, when we do a cauliflower, we want to make sure we, we start peeling it from the outside. The last thing we want to do is go in there with a knife and cut it. Oh, no, you don't want to do that ever. You get cauliflower all over your cutting board, and then you're breaking the beautiful floret. We don't want to do that. So we go on the inside. Now, be careful. You take a paring knife, and you go in there, and you remove the leaf knife. The big leaf, you remove them first until you get to this. You want to remove this. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. That's a new song I just created. Yeah. <laughs> so look, we remove it, we clean it, and now what we want to do, we want to go in there and remove it as much as we can of the heart without trying to remove any floret. And as usual, friends, we want to take a bowl. We want to remove all this out of our cutting bowl so we keep a nice clean surface. All right? Hope I'm not putting this in the middle of the camera. So what we want to do now, we want to try to pull gently. Pull gently. You may not have to use your knife too much right away, you see? Pull gently. You see? If you pull gently, it'll come to you because you remove where it was holding on to it, right? Boom, 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 boom. And you notice, going back to the boom, boom, boom. Uh, you notice, friends, that I haven't broken anything. Now, if you need very big floret, stop here. Clean the root. If you need big floret, you make in cauliflower gratin or something, then you leave it. But if you need a small, then you want to clean it. And let's say you got a big one in here, and you really want a small floret. You clean it this way. And remember now, you go in, and you cut the floret out. Cut them out. You see, for a salad, for things, it's wonderful. You see? Cut them out. Go in there, and cut your flower out. And then what you do, you take them out, you see? I have not lost any of the cluster of, from the floret. And that's, friends, the easiest way to prepare your cauliflower. Now, most of the time, I like to poach it in milk, put it in, and then use that milk to make fabulous sauces and bechamel and all that. Many ways to cook cauliflowers or gratin, roast it in the oven. The idea is to avoid breaking the little floret, and right there, my friend, this is how you clean a cauliflower. <laughs> celery. Okay, well, <laughs> many recipe of celery, friends. First thing we do is we cut the root off. Because this, the only thing you're going to need it for is for stock, so save it. And then you take it all apart, and you wash it, and you wash it, and you wash it. You see, it's very dirty. So we're not going to use this one. We got them right here clean. Okay? So we have, we can do dice, we can do julienne, we can do big dye, we can do a lot of things with it. Very simple. First thing I like to do, friends, I like to clean this edge right there. So I have a straight edge right there. Not very straight. I have a straight edge. This, we use it for stock. All right, so let's say now then we wanted to make some um, uh, julienne style. This, save it for stock. We're going to go in, in a bias. You see? Look, bias. I'm going in a bias. Very thin bias. And right there, my friends, we're going to have ourselves. Now, is it nice and straight as a julienne? No, but it certainly will do for most dishes. If we want a straight julienne, we'll go over that in a second. All right? So now, what else do we want to do? Many times when we do the celery, we need dice of celery. So we always want to make sure we use a piece that is manageable and easy to handle. This is very easy to handle. This is a little difficult to handle. 
So what we do is we cut our uh, pieces into julienne style, the style that we want to cut, we want meaning the size of the dice we want to use. This is going to be a medium small dice. Not too small, medium style dice. Something that we're going to use for addition is going to cook only for a few minutes, not very long. Okay, now let's say we want to serve it for a salad. A salad, we're going to cut this in half, we're going to cut it in half, we're going to cut it in half again, or in third. We're going to make smaller, thinner julienne. Thinner julienne. We're going to take those julienne, and again, we're going to hold them together, and we're going to cut them in smaller dice. And here we have a smaller dice. And this is, would be like for a salad, for some place you're really go, not gonna cook it that much, it'll give you a nice little crunch like a tuna salad or something. Save all this for the stock. But now let's say we wanna make something, we're gonna cook it in a big dice because we're gonna cook it for a while. It's gonna be in a stew uh, and we're gonna cook it for a while so we're gonna make a bigger dice. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna cut this in half and again, put this side down so it's easier to handle. We don't want it to move, whatever we do. And we get ourselves a bigger dice. All right? Very simple. And now, let's say we really, really want a very big dice. So all we got to do at this point, friends, and that's for something that is going to cook for a long time. Okay? So now, let's say we wanted to make it a thin, 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 thin julienne. Again, we want it to be straight. And in case we wanted a small, long, long julienne, but, or a stir fry maybe, but it's still going to be a little too long, so we're going to cut them in half. Cut them thin, cut them thin, and then we're going to cut it, and we got ourselves a nice little julienne. And voila, my friends, very simple way to handle your celery. Now, if you have all those left over, you say, well, I'm not going to make stock this week. Put it in a container and put it in a the freezer. They freeze beautiful. And friends, this is the easiest way to handle celery. Oh, I forgot to say another thing. The leaves, what do you do with the leaves? Great for stock, but try, try to eat one. They don't eat, they don't eat so good. I don't really like them, so I don't use them for nothing. I use them for stock. Cucumber. Boy, that's a cucumber, let me tell you. <laughs> Seedless cucumber. I love them. They're wonderful. Too big. We're going to have to cut it so we can, we can handle it, the size of it, to make it easy to cut. First thing we want to do for is when you buy a cucumber, make sure you buy them with the extremity a firm. If that, that's how they start the rot, is uh, to go bad on us, is they start right there, and then they go down. So when you buy them, make sure you touch your ends of it because sometimes they're wrapped up, you can't see it. And make sure they're nice and firm at the end of it, okay? We're gonna cut both ends of it anyway. We don't want them. And um, now, there's some cool things you can do with this. Uh, I love using a mandolin, and then I'll show you how to cut it some other way. But the cool thing about it is, if you use a mandolin, yeah, a little too thin, Jean-Pierre. Here you go. You can make some really cool things with it, see? Be careful now. Because uh, when you cut with a mandolin, you gotta go, you change size, you know? Don't go to the same size all the time because you get it to an angle. So you got little slices like that, what can you do with it? I'll show you. You take it right there, you put it on the plate, and you can make a nice decoration, you see? You put a salad, you put a fish, you put anything you want right there on your plate, my friends. And I promise you, that looks awesome. And it make it very thin, and everybody eats it. So it's not just pretty, it's actually, very cool to eat it. See, right there, boy, I cut just enough. Right there. Very simple, quick little decoration we can do with cucumbers. But now we want to put it in salad. I love cucumber in salad. So what I like to do is cut it so I can, uh, again, manageable size. Okay, so it's not too big. I can definitely handle this to cut it. And then what I do, I cut it straight down, and then 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 I cut it straight down, and this one I didn't cut it perfectly. I'm doing video, I'm cutting vegetables, I gotta do it perfectly. And then we put them like this, and then we cut them in 
edible slices. We don't want them too big, but they fit perfectly. And that's really a super easy way to handle your cucumber. Of course, you can make them bigger if you wanted to. And if you want to put them on salad, you want them a little different shape, you cut it again like this. Not too big, remember. Small enough so you can handle it. We go down. And we can cut them, kind of like what we cut our zucchini in a little bit of an angle so they have more of a presence. They have more of a presence in a dish. Or we can go back again this way, cut them in half, and for a stir fry, that's the way I like to do it. So I have nice slices in my stir fry. Really, really simple. And if I want to make it a little bigger, of course, I make them a little bigger, but same deal. So this, friends, is a quick little introduction to cucumbers. And that's a fennel, friends. Let me show you how to cut it. It's amazing, isn't it? Look how beautiful that is, a fennel. How do you describe a fennel if you've never had it? Kind of like a, a celery texture with a anise flavor. Let's cut it. We have these beautiful uh, um, uh, stems coming out, <laughs> whatever your branch is coming out. And um, you can do a broth, you can do soups with it, not much. You want to save the frown probably for uh, um, a salad, uh, a, um, a decoration on salad and thing. They're kind of okay. I mean, they kind of they look like dill. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it if you have to throw them away. So <laughs> we're going to clean this up a little bit. The root end, we're cleaning it a little bit of it, you see. And then what we do here, because we have to clean it up a little bit, you just take a little bit of a, a pillar and you peel the, um, the little marking you may have. You don't want to peel it too much. Just a little bit right there, you see. And voila. So now what do we do, friends? Well, you, at this point, my friends, you really, really have to have a very sharp knife. You gotta cut it in half. Not this way, the length way of it, okay? But what you do now, you, you, you really have to have a strong, uh, uh, and you're gonna go straight down, and you're gonna go in, and always remember, when you do things like that that are very hard, you move your knife. So you are utilizing the teeth of your knife. Now you have the inside of it, and you can see we have a root, a root right there, and we need to remove that root. So it's very simple. You go like this, and you go like this, and you remove the roots. Okay? So now, at this point, depends what it is you're going to be doing with it. Uh, if you're going to put it on salad, you're going to cut it with a mandolin, very, very, very thin, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If you're going to make some dice, which is most often if you're going to use it for seafood, for stoop, you need to make a little dice of it. So all you got to do is cut it the lengthwise, Right? And take your, your um, uh, 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 long slices of it and cut them and you have yourself already a dice, you see? Because that's the way it is, so you have dice. You can make them bigger, you can make it smaller. Obviously, bigger the slice, bigger the dice. Really simple, right? But now, one other way, well, another thing you could do also is... Um, uh, well, first, let me show you the salad deal because it's really, really important. And then I'll show you, you can cook them. My mom used to cut them in quarters and wrap them with ham and put a bechamel sauce and bake them in a lasagna pan. Delicious. Okay, or you can take a mandolin. It's a very dangerous tool. Be careful. Uh, you should use it with a guard, except it's so big, it's difficult to use a guard. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go right here. I'm just going to make sure the camera can see it, right? And I'm going to cut them. This has to be, pep friends, pepper thin. Well, that's a little too thin. Let's, <laughs> there you go. We're going to go like this, and then we're going to cut. And it has to be so thin, and this actually could be thinner. It could be a little thinner, so we're going to make them just a little thinner. Come back up. Now, at this point, be very careful now. We use a mandolin, and voila, look, you see? This is perfect right there, friends. This is absolutely perfect for salad. And if you want to make them even a little thinner, be careful with that mandolin, use the guard, use the guard, okay? And voila, my friend, look, you see? Look at this right there on salad. Oh, oh I promise you, it gives a nice little anise flavor to your salad. It's fabulous. 
So this is fennel, and then, like I was telling you earlier also, well, now it's difficult to cut them in quarters, but right there, it's thin enough, small enough, then we can wrap this with ham, put them in a sauce, like a bechamel or mole sauce, and bake them, and they're amazing. This is the fennel. This is how you handle it. Garlic. There's so many hacks out there. None of them work. <laughs> or to pull out the garlic, there's not that many ways to do it. One way is for sure, you take the garlic, you bang it a little bit, you bang it a little bit, you put it in a bowl, <laughs> put another one on top. Now, if it's super fresh, it don't come out that easy either. What do we get? Hey, we got a little bit of breakage. Not much, but we get a little bit of breakage easier than try to do it yourself okay so no matter what there's no really quick 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 way to do it friends you take it you cut the root end and you peel it and it really only takes a few seconds to do it <laughs> sure i got a difficult one now it's going to take two minutes to do this one <laughs> but normally they come up pretty easy the secret is really take it cut the root end and then Peel, and it really is not that big of a deal to do it. Now, you could certainly continue shaking it and you get a little more result, but you're never going to get the skin out of them completely unless you do what I'm doing right here, friends. It's the only way to really pull, pull the skin out, especially if you have a very fresh garlic. If you have a very old garlic, eh, it comes out really easy. It's kind of like the onion. What do we do with this now? Right now, well, there's so many ways to, um, to also chop it. We can certainly do very thin, very, very, very thin slices, and we will get to the flat side, and then we'll put it down, and we continue. Now then we have thin slices, we can certainly use them like this, or we can use a knife and chop it and we have a chopped garlic. We can do it this way. We can take our time to make it a little thinner. Or we can simply take a garlic clove, put it on the cutting board, make sure your knife can go flat on the cutting board. You take it right there, you make sure you're solid, make sure it doesn't move too much, and you smack it. And right there you have a smacked <laughs> garlic cloves and all you have to do that's another easy way to do it another easy way to do it is to do it with a video that i did where i take my whole cloves put it in a food processor with a little bit of olive oil and i create a garlic puree you can keep it in your freezer and put it in an ice cube tray that's also a super easy way to do it and here it is for garlic, very simple, no hacks. Just take it out, take it out of the peel. Ginger, ginger roots. It's actually your vegetables. So <laughs> what I like to do, friends, like everything, I like to cut it in, ooh, that's a big one, manageable size, manageable, manageable size. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're going to peel it a little bit. You know, sometimes I don't even peel it. I wash it really good. I don't even peel it. I use the microplane grater. Matter of fact, I have one. I always forget. The microplane grater is a good tool to use for this, so we'll do this in a second. Um, and so what I like to do is just to remove the, uh, the dry ends of it. And uh, you know, a lot of people say do it with a spoon. You know, I've tried the spoon deal. Okay, yeah, it works. It works, right? Now, if you if you got time to do it with a spoon, then go right ahead and do it with a spoon. If you don't have time to do it with a spoon, then do it with a paring knife. And then you can cut the, bad, the dry ends of it. But it's up to you. This is an expensive uh, vegetables, so we don't want to waste too much. But if you do it carefully, you're not going to waste that much. Okay? La. All right, now what are we doing now with this? Well, we're going to remove it. And then... What I like to do, you can do so many things. First of all, the best way to manage it is to cut it in slices, friends. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut it in slices. Okay, and 
the slices. At this point, we can certainly cut them in very, very small julienne. We can take that julienne and leave it like that if that's the dish we're making. Or we can tuck that julienne that we have right there, and we can cut it. Oh, hey, come back over here. <laughs> we can cut it in dice. Take that julienne, put them all together. They're not cooperating. And we're going to cut it in little dice. So we have a julienne of ginger, or we have a dice of ginger. Take the back of the knife, put it right there. Or if we want it, of course, some recipe, you can put the whole thing in there and you can remove it. It gives you a really nice flavor. Or what you can do, if you really want it to smash the thing, you take the, the slices and you're going to pound it against the grain of it. And all you're going to do is you're going to go like this and you're going to smash it. I cut it a little too big, but if you notice, see, by smashing it right there, all you got to do at this point, friends, is give it a quick little cut and you got yourself really easy puree of ginger. Or you can take your microplane grater. This is the one you use for the chocolate and the cheese. Be careful because that's how you make pink ginger. <laughs> Here you have a friend, you see look. Be careful. I say be careful because one time I didn't be careful, I was doing something else and right here, you also have grated ginger. And oh, make sure when you buy one, it's nice and firm. It doesn't have too many root ends of it like that. And um, friends, this is a quick little introduction to ginger. Leeks, another onion, part of the onion family. When you buy them, you gotta make sure they're nice and white. Whiter it is, sweeter it is. And the white part grows into the ground. When it comes out, the chlorophyll starts, and then that's bitter. But this, my friends, is delicious for stock and, soup and soups. This is delicious for anything. Really wonderful. How do we clean it? Full of sand, because it goes into the ground. First, we remove the root. Sometimes there's a big root in there. They removed it already. So what I do is I cut the root. And then it depends on the size what I want to do with it. If I'm going to make julienne or I'm going to cook with it, I cut them about that size right there. Cut them this size, this size, and then maybe we can get this one right there. And this, we save it for stock and soup because it's quite bitter. Let's talk with this one right here. How do we do it? We just cut it in half. And then, well, this one is not very dirty. <laughs> you see, there's not much sand in this guy right there. You see, normally they're full of sand right there. So what I do is I take them and I put them in here and I wash them, you see? I wash them. This one has no sand in it. <laughs> I picked up a clean one to show you how to clean them, friends. Hey, what are you gonna do? This one right here, let's see if this guy right there may have a little bit, but I doubt it. If there is no sand in the root, there probably is no sand here either. And you see, no sands either, no sands. Now the beautiful thing about this, my friends, is then we can now cut beautiful juliennes. What we do, we take about, it's like a sheet, look at this. How cool is that? So you take about three or four, put them aside, put them down, and now you can make beautiful julienne. And you can cook them. You can put them in so many different dishes. It's wonderful. If you never had uh, uh, leeks, my friends, you see, look, beautiful juliennes. All right, so this is how we make the juliennes of leeks. Some recipe, I'll use them and you'll see it. Now we can also do plain and simple, cut them in rounds. And thin rounds also are great for salads, they're great for all kinds of dish dishes. And the rest of it, cut it up big and save it. And if you're not gonna make stock right away or soup right away, cut it up and put it in the freezer. It stays wonderful in the freezer. This is how you end all leeks. Mushrooms, oh, look at it. It's a portobello mushroom, big ones, boy. That's a nice specimen right there, friends. We'll talk about this in a minute because the most important mushroom that everybody uses is the button mushroom. You know, I don't wash them. I, um, I wipe them with a, with a cloth, you know, and uh, 
People say, no, don't wash them. They're going to absorb more water. They don't absorb water, I promise you. You take some mushroom, you put them in, you weigh them, then you put them in water, and you shake the water, and you weigh them, they weigh the same. They don't absorb water. So, anyway, <laughs> what do we do with this? Well, we want to slice it. And um, I don't really like the stems, but some people don't mind eating the stems. It's up to you. You know, if you like it, I find it to be woodsy. So I usually remove it, but it's really up to you, my friends. And then what we're going to do now, we're going to slice it. Now, if you're making a sauce that you want small pieces of mushroom, this could be a little too big. So you know what I do? I get a couple of slices right there, and then I flip it around. And then I cut it like this. And then I may flip it again. So for a delicate sauce, I may not have big pieces of mushroom. Okay, but if I want a big piece of the mushroom, then they'll just keep it like this. And then when it falls, I still fall it, and we got a little bigger mushroom, okay? And then we can dice them, we can do all kinds of different things with it. All the mushrooms are basically the same, okay? You want to keep the, 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 the stem, you keep the stem. They're pretty with the stem, you see? They, they look a little pretty with the stem. You know, it's really up to you, my friend. The stem, no stem, it's up to you. Do you like it? Keep it. You don't like it? Throw it away like I do. Um, shiitake, creamy mushrooms, very woodsy, very woodsy stems. They, they, you could never want to eat it. So I twist it and I get rid of it. And then I, I cut it the same way. Depends what I'm making. I may not want a long pieces of this mushroom, which means I'll cut it this way. Okay, it's really up to you. Depends what it is you're making. Okay, you're making a result. You want a nice, beautiful piece of the mushroom. You're making a sauce. You may not want it so big. You cut it a little smaller. But same deal. You cut it. And then you cut it in half. The portobello mushroom, different deal. What we have to do here, my friends, is uh, if you look at it, it's got, you know what, let me clean this stuff out of the way, friends, so everybody can see what I'm doing. We're going to make a nice uh, a mushroom risotto tonight for dinner, because I got them right here. So let me put this right here, clean this up. If you look at the portobello mushroom, my friends, you see it's got gills in it. It look like a fish. So when you buy, if you buy it with a stem on it, you want to remove the stem. And what I recommend you do is you don't yank it. You want to squeeze it. See, you're squeezing it. See, I'm going to do it so the camera can see it. You're squeezing it. You see, squeezing it. See, that's what you do. And if you look at it, it's pretty woodsy. There's nothing good in here. And then what we want to do, friends, we want to take a ball and we want to... Scra uh, scrape the gills like a gill of a fish. Believe me, yeah, they're not good. You want to, you definitely want to um, uh, scrape them. We got a video, and Jack is gonna put a a link of it. Uh, this was the first video that I did on this channel when I took it over about a year and a half ago. That was our first video, so we probably did a little green in the video, but we did it, we did it. It's beautiful. Uh, a portobello mushroom appetizer. Amazing. You got to watch it. It's a really nice video. So you can do it like I did in the video. You put it in a nice vinaigrette. You can roast them. You can grill them. If you're going to cut them, again, same kind of deal. Okay? You can do it like this, grill it. But remember, you got to rehydrate them a little bit. You put some vinaigrettes in there. Otherwise, you put them on the grill. And if you do that, indirect heating. The flame is over there and the mushroom is over there so it doesn't get burned with the, with the oil because you're going to put it in the vinaigrette. If you want to cut it, here's what I recommend you do, friend. You cut it in half and then you cut it. Now, all of a sudden, you got some nice pieces of mushroom. And of course, if they're too big, then you cut them in half, okay? But otherwise, just like this. Depends what it is you're making. You're making a sauce with portobello mushroom, you better cut them in half, okay? Otherwise, that's it, friends. This is a very small and fun introduction to mushroom. The onion. Oh, wow, that is definitely the most often used vegetables, friends. I'm going to use a red onion because it's easier for me to demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about. So, um, top root end of the onion, I maintain, and I will always maintain that it's best to remove the root and don't worry about crying more. You don't cry anymore because you remove the root, but that's not today's video. We'll do another one in detail. So don't worry about this. What we want to do is we want to remove the root, but little, little, because we're not going to use it. So we might as well get rid of it. We're not going to use it. If we don't use it, get rid of it. Don't worry about uh, uh, jeopardizing the integrity of the onion. It does not. Remove the top. 
Remove, it's easier if you remove, now the, the red onion, when it's super fresh like this guy right there, is not always easy to peel. But it's easy if you use your paring knife, you see? I'm using my paring knife and I'm going over it and I'm peeling it. I'm grabbing the skin right there and I'm pulling it, okay? They're not always exactly easy to do in the, um, um, in the red onion. White onion, much easier than the red onion in this case. You see, it's giving me a little issue, but not a problem, very fresh. When it's fresh like that, the skin is super, super, super tight on it. Okay, so now we're gonna take it, we're gonna remove it, so we have a clean work surface. Very important, friends. Always have a clean, clean work surface. When we cut the onion uh, in half, we always wanted to make sure we cut it pole to pole, never against the grain, unless you're making onion rings. It's the only time you do that. So we're gonna cut it and we're gonna make sure we got two perfect half. Like I said, this is not another onion video. <laughs> this is just a fit in this format of cutting the vegetables. So we're gonna do, we're gonna move forward and we're gonna cut it and we're gonna release. Now, the reason why it's very important that I use the red onions because I wanted you to see you see, friends, I removed the roots, but you see how tight the layers are? If you really look carefully here, very, very tight, and look what happened on the top. They're very loose on the top. It's because as they grow, they grow bigger, and they release right here. So the root end is still attached, but you see the layers are perfectly well attached to it, even if you remove the roots. Okay, so what else do we do now? Let's say we want to dice it very, very simple. We just take a knife. And we dice it, but we don't want to cut the whole thing. We don't want to go all the way to the end. So we cut about, what would you say, 90%, uh, 80% of it. You cut, you don't cut all the way through. So you don't go like this. You cut like this. Very simple. Now we get to the end. You want to hold it carefully like this. So we hold, stay together. But you notice it's holding together pretty good, right? Now we're going to take this guy. And now what do we do? We turn it around. And we're gonna go. Remember when you use a knife, you always wanna use a forward or backward motion. Now you say, how come we didn't do the vertical cut? I'll show you why I didn't do the vertical cut, friends. If you notice the onion right here, how it's cut, you see? All the little cut right here. Remember, it's already cut for you in, should we call him Julien? I call him Julien. Now, look at this now. You see that vertical cut? What do you think? What sense does that make for me to put a vertical cut here? That means this guy is cut in half, this one is cut in half, this one is cut in half, but not this one, not this one. So you say, well, let's make two vertical cuts. Okay, so we do one here and we do one here. Now, does that mean what happened to those guys? We don't cut them? You don't need the vertical cut. Okay, look, look, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you. It's very simple, my friend, very, very simple. Okay, look, look how beautiful it is. Okay, so... All right, you're going to say, oh, you know what? The one at the end, because you didn't go in an angle, is a little bigger. Have you ever had a dish where you go, you know, well, I, that was very good, but I had a piece of onion that was a little bigger than the other. <laughs> Get out of my kitchen. All right, so now <laughs> I want to show you. Now what do we do with the end, friends? What do we do with the ends? Okay, we go back and we give it a see look. We give it another little cut. And you notice the onion is not falling apart. Okay? And we continue. Now we don't need to worry about the root because the root is gone. We put it down, we'll do exactly the same thing. And you know what we do at the end? Let's give it a little cut like this using our knife. Okay, and if some pieces are a little bigger than the next, you know what? I don't think it's gonna make a difference. Now this is for the minced onion. And now I'm gonna show you another video. We're gonna take at this one, the skin. And I'm going to show you another video where we're going to do the white onion. Okay, so we're going to peel it. This is a yellow Spanish onion. Remember the top and the bottom. And then we're going to use a peri knife and we're going to pull the skin. Sometimes it comes super easy and sometimes if it's super, super fresh, it takes a little while to come. But um, eventually it does. See, this is also another very fresh one. Voila. Clean up our wet surface. Okay, so now, 
Now that we have uh, another clean onion, I'm going to show you how to make different cuts. Different cuts where sometimes you making a recipe where you want a julienne of onion, but not so big. So I'm going to show you. Remember, always cut with the grain, pole to pole. Never cut against the grain. I'll show you. All right, so cut it in half. Same thing with the, with the yellow onion. You can see then the, 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 the root end is super, super tight, and on the top of it, they're very, very loose. You can see it. I mean, it's difficult to see. That's what I did with the red onion. So now, what we're going to do, we're going to make sure we know where the root is, and the root is right there. So um, when we cut it in half, we're going to make the julienne. All we're doing, basically, now you can make them bigger, make them thinner, and then you have yourself julienne. Now, those may be too long. Depends what it is you're cooking. Okay, they may be too long. Like, for instance, if you're making an onion soup, you don't want a big piece like that in your spoon. Otherwise, it'll, it'll hang in your spoon. It won't be easy to eat. So you know what I do? I take them and I cut them in half. Right? And then I continue cutting. And then, oh, oh I didn't show you. We get to, to this part right here. Sure, you can go like this, but it's not as practical. So you know what I do? I let it go down. And then it makes it easy to continue my cut based on whatever size it is that I'm going to be. When, when you get over here, well, be careful. All right? So now you have yourself the half of julienne. Then you see me use a, a very, very often in a recipe where the onion is more present than a diced onion, but it's not too much. And here, obviously, something would have to cook a long time, otherwise it hangs. Now, onion rings, friends. That's another cut that we do a lot. Let me move this. You know what? I'm going to move this out of the way, friends. So I have a clean cutting board. Onion rings, it's probably the... Uh, we have to be very careful with onion rings, friends. Because you, you hold the whole big onion. And, uh, and, uh, and when you do it, you're like, oh, like, mama mia. So you have to be really, really, really firm when you do this. You're cutting an onion. I put my hand here. I put my hand here. And I go... Straight down, and you gotta be careful. Keep your knife straight. You see, keep your knife straight, my friend, when you're making onion rings. And voila, you got yourself onion rings. Make sure you keep your knife straight, otherwise you have onion rings. Oh, look at this guy. That's part of the skin. Sometimes they have a little bit of the skin. Look at this, you have beautiful onion rings. Voila, that was a quick little introduction, my friends, to onion. Potatoes. So many recipes use potatoes. So let's figure out a few ways to cut the potatoes, friends. The number one thing to do is be very careful because a potato rolls around and we don't want to cut something that rolls around. So we want to cut a side to make it flat first. And, um, and, and if you notice, this, this is wide and this is skinnier. All the potatoes are kind of like that. There's white side and the skinny side. So the first one we're going to cut is going to be the skinny one because that's the easiest one to cut when it doesn't move. So what I do is I secure the potatoes very carefully this way, this way, whatever is comfortable. I like to use the palm of my hand. And then I move. Remember, friend, we want to move the knife forward. Otherwise, it sticks. And sometimes it's still going to stick. Those knives really are cool. This is called hollow ground. It creates a little air pocket between the potato and the knife, so it doesn't stick as much. So what we're going to do, we're going to move forward as we cut. So we activate the teeth, and it doesn't stick so much. So we go in, and we move forward. And as we move backward, see, it doesn't stick at all. Why am I cutting this? Because now I have a flat side. I'm going to show you how to make the perfect dice. You don't want to make the perfect dice. You don't need to remove the edge. But I like to remove the edge. Remember, always. See, we're now solid, right? We're going forward, backward. As long as we do some motion, this is the way if you went to culinary school, you would thought to do it. At home, you certainly don't need to do it this way. So now, this you can serve for mashed potatoes. You can certainly don't do it at home if you don't want to do a perfect square. But if you want to do a perfect square, you'll have to do it. Now, now what we're going to do here, we're going to cut big slices of it. The size of your slice will determine the size of your dice. If I cut the potato in half, I'm going to have very large dice, which is great for uh, 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 fried potatoes, home fried, bigger, bigger size. 
If I cut them, depends the size that I'm going to do. The smallest one we're going to do, if we want to do a, a, like a, a potatoes for a frittata or something, we don't want it to make it too big, so we want to cut it small. So remember, we're going forward and backward. See, look, remember, forward oh, and backward. And hold the potato nice and tight. Eh? So forward and backward, or forward and down. So now when we get to here, ooh, this is a little fragile, right? So you know what I do? I take it, and I cut it this way, and go backward. Forward, backward. Forward, backward. All right, so we're going to leave that aside. So now what we do, we take the, you can do two or three at together at the time, but at the beginning I recommend you don't do more than two slices. And you hold them, you see? The pinky, boop, boop, all my fingers right there are holding, and we're going to cut down. And what we're going to do right there, friends, we're making perfect julienne. If we were to make french fries, we would have perfect julienne right here. You see? Right? So now we're going to take those julienne, and we're going to cut them in dice. You see? Now we have perfect dice. That means all sides are equal about. We're not doing a food competition here. This is kind of about. So this is a, this would be a, a frittata or for an omelette. Now let's say we wanted to make a little bigger, so we we can't change anymore now because we already got one side cut, so we can't change anymore. So we we'll have to keep that same size for the whole potatoes. You see? So this is for kind of like a medium dice. So let's put this aside for now, and let's go to another potatoes where we can do a different size. Okay, so now again we're doing the same principle. I keep them in water so they don't um, uh, oxidize and turn gray. Remember, same principle. We go in, we're down, 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 boom, and boom. Now let's say we want to make a larger dice. I like to keep my area. I'm going to make nice mashed potatoes tonight. So what we do instead of cutting them that size, we're going to cut the potato in three. Now, remember, we got bigger, so not bigger uh, slice, so now we're going to take one, two, one, two, and then we're going to put this like this, and now we got ourselves bigger dice. You see? Bigger dice. And this is more for like a, a fried or a, a, and here we have it. Much bigger dice. So remember, the size of your slice will determine the size of your julienne, which will determine the size of your dice. Then you can have some cool um, uh, uh, cutters also to make some interesting uh, 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 potatoes, uh, especially uh, fries. You can do some full thing. You get those things right there. It's, uh, 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 I think it's called a crinkle cut. So we, you can get those, uh, those cutters. You go straight down, and it gives you a crinkle. So you do it again, you see, look. Right? And then you got like that. Or you can go in, and you get yourself some kirkle, uh, what do you call it? Kirkle fries. And you got yourself, you see? So the idea is to go in really easy to do. So we cut straight down. And then we go the opposite of the line, and we got to serve some cool looking fries right there. So small dice, big dice, the lesson to learn is to make sure the potato is stable, it doesn't move so much. And we keep them in water so they don't oxidize. The size of the dice is based on the size of your slice. And that's for potato easy. Scallion. Part of the onion family. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to clean up a little bit the end, and then we're going to remove the roots. Really simple. Remove the roots. You never, never use it. Now at this point, this white part is going to take longer to cook than this. When we cut it, we want to make sure we cut it in an angle. It looks better. It looks better, you see? Put this aside. Those are going to take a little bit longer to cook. And then the, uh, the, uh, the green part is great for salad. It's great for any dish. You put them at the end. And you cut it. Really, really simple. Makes a nice little presentation. And that's it. That's about all for scallion. This is scallion. 
Charlotte, this is also from the onion family. They're wonderful. When you buy them, try to buy some big ones because they're much easier to handle than the little one. You know, depends where you go. Again, you peel them like you peel an onion. And you basically, you handle it the same way you use an onion. It's a small onion, except we may have to cut it in half. Let's go into it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll remove the roots like we do for the onion. And we'll remove the top. Sometimes it's easier to remove both before we remove the, uh, the skin of them. And sometimes they, like the onion, they're very tight, my friends. Very tight, right on it, you see? Very, very, very tight. Very good, that means it's nice and fresh. Now, sometimes it's very easy to see. You can divide them in half. This one, you count. This one is def definitely made like an onion. So, my we could have cut it in half. And if we look, <laughs> this is like a miniature red onion. It really is the same thing. Why do we use them? They're much more delicate than an onion in sauces. So remember the root end, the root ends away from us. And what we're gonna do, like we do an onion, now we wanna cut them very small, very, very small. Whoa, this is a very, very soft one, you see? Because my knife is super, super sharp. So we're gonna go in like an onion. Remember now, don't be out there go getting any um, a vertical cut, okay? It makes no sense at all, you see? The, the, the shallots, like the onion, is already cut for you in julienne, if you will. They bend the julienne, but they're already cut. All we gotta do is go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, and at the end, we go like this, and we have ourselves a perfectly, perfectly minced shallots. You see? And this in sauces, you usually put it as one of the first ingredients, and I promise you, friends, after you cook it for a few minutes, you're not too concerned. It's one piece a little bigger than the next. You won't even be able to tell, I promise you. So relax. Don't go out there and be dangerous with that uh, vertical cut, or whatever they call it. When you, you see somebody do that, I cringe. We should never put a knife in the direction of our hand to begin with anyway. So now, friends, we're going to do the same thing as we do the onion. We're going to make little julienne. A little junior, we go up and down. Remember, never, we're going with the direction of pole to pole. Always pole to pole, pole to pole. So when you're doing shots, you go up and down, and we go pole to pole. And right there, we got ourselves some beautiful julienne of shallots. And this is... A very quick introduction to shallots. Squash, yellow squash, zucchini. That's a squash too. Friends, uh, we're gonna cut them. Now, I love squash, I can eat them with anything. Very simple, eh? First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut both ends, because that you don't wanna eat, okay? <laughs> no matter what it is, you never wanna eat that. And then there's so many ways to cut it. Okay, but um, uh, the most common way to cut it, you know, and I love to cook. You gotta cook them a little bit. They don't need to cook a lot of the time, but they need to cook a little bit. You can cut them in half because it's more manageable. It's easier than trying to handle the whole thing. And then you remember, we tr try to always cut something that is not moving too much. So let's say then we wanna make some, uh, we're gonna cut them straight. We're gonna be careful, okay? And now, we can cut them so different way. We're gonna make some cool little julienne out of it, you see? We cut them like this. You got some cool julienne. Now those are gonna cook really fast and they look kinda cool, you see? Very simple, right? And they look really cool. Of course, we can do some dices. And, uh, and so we cut the slices this way, and we cut this way, and we cut it this way, and then we can do our dices or we can do some elongated, bigger pieces. Depends what it is you're going to be doing with it. In an angle, they're like kind of cool. Same idea. If you want to cut them in dices, then of course you cut this in dices. Very simple. And also, I have a really cool trick. Let's say you're making a risotto. And, um, and, uh, and you want to put squash in it. You can let it cook at the last minute. You just put it in... in um, in your uh, 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 vegetable grater, and you do this. And let me tell you, this is, and just straight up, you see? 
You put this on your, on your uh, uh, rice, on your soup at the last minute, it cooks super, super fast, and it looks really, really, really good. You can do exactly the same with a zucchini, obviously. It would look better if I had a whole bigger piece, but you got the idea, you see? So now you got green and you got yellow. Really, really simple. Now, what I like to do when I do a stir fry is cut them in little pieces. So the yellow, I kind of handle it, the, the ends of it, I handle it a little bit differently. Let me get this guy straight right there. So we're going to cut it. And usually I cut them this way. Let me put this out of the way. And depends how, how much, how long I'm going to cook it. But if I make a stir fry, then I just cut them like this. Very simple. And those, my friends, are going to cook super, 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 super fast. Depends how big, how long they cook, you cut them a little bigger. And really, really simple. So this, my friends, is an introduction to squash. Tomatoes. We're going to cut them two different ways, folks. We're going to cut them with the skin on and without the skin. Without the skin, it's and we're going to dice them, it's called a tomato con cassé, if we were to use the right terminology. Um, and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take the skin. Now, it helps if your tomato is uh, very well ripened, vine ripened, that is. <laughs> In Florida, we have issues with that. Uh, we don't get really nice tomatoes, but I heard in New Jersey they get beautiful tomatoes. Take it, put it in boiling water. As you put it in boiling water, you want to make sure you have ice water ready to go. How long it's going to take is based on how ripe is your tomatoes. Could take a few seconds, it could take a couple of minutes. Okay, so how do we know it's ready? You can see, friends, right there, the skin of the tomatoes. It's starting to peel off. Let me show you real quick. The minute that happens, right there, you can see it? You have to put it in ice water immediately. Immediately in ice water, friends. Otherwise, your tomato will cook. The purpose of this exercise is not to, um, to cook the tomato. We don't want to cook it. We just want it to remove the skin. And the shocking, by the way, this is how you do most vegetables. Broccoli, green beans, asparagus, boiling water, oh, ice water right away. Stop the cooking process. So here we have it, right here. Make sure it's nice and cold now. Super cold water. And the water is super cold, that means you put ice at the same time you turn on the heat. It takes as long to chill this water as it has to boil this water. So, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna get ourselves a bowl. And then what we're going to do, we're going to peel the skin off. See, look, it comes right off. You see? Now, if you're very good with a paring knife, you can try to peel it off. Vegetable peeler would have to be very, very, very sharp to do this, friends. See, it comes right off. This is what happened. Now, like I say, your tomato, if it's not a ripe tomatoes, Fine ripened tomato, it could take a long time for this to happen, the skin to come off. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna put it upside down and we're gonna cut it around the core. Around the core. Now, if you have a beautifully vine ripened tomato, the whole life of the tomatoes, you're not gonna have the white core like we have right here. I'm gonna put this right here, I hope that does not block the camera. And what I like to do, friends, I like to actually remove the seeds. You see, remove the seeds. Now, this is just a classical way of making a concasse, a tomato concasse. You don't want to remove the seed and, uh, or the skin, then we're going to show you another way to cut them in a minute. You can do that as well. You want to take your time to remove the seeds. And this is a, when would you use that? If you're making a risotto, you want to put tomatoes in there and uh, you want to make a delicate uh, dish without the, um, the seeds and the, uh, the skin, then it's a perfect way of doing it. And then what we'll do here, friends, we'll take, and you see there still is a few seeds left. I'm obviously not taking too long to do it. You can certainly take better time to do it. And then, you get down at the end of the day, 
and you have yourself a now if you take your time to clean it a little bit better you really have yourself a beautiful chopped and and diced peeled tomatoes then will be absolutely delicious in uh, in a, a, a finished uh, uh, risottos or uh, even a, a pasta dish at the end you can put this right on there and this my friends is very delicate okay so this is one way of doing the tomatoes and if you don't want to bother doing it this way then what you're going to do let me uh, get a cleaning let me move this out of the way so we don't confuse them and we're gonna cut it like I have it right here. And how do we do this? Very simple. We take the tomato, we leave the core. We remove a little bit of the leaf is there if they are big in a way. We don't remove the core, we leave the core. And then what we do is we're gonna cut it. Now you need a super, super sharp knife for this. If you don't have a super sharp knife for this, then you wanna use a, a serrated knife. It would work well. And remember when you use, you cut a tomato, you wanna move and uh, you leave about, uh, um, I don't know, 10% of the tomato, kind of like when you're doing an onion, you're leaving the core, same, same kind of idea, you see? Remember, I'm making my movement to activate the actual teeth of my knife, you see? And you make them big, small, however you want it. Obviously, the smaller you make them, and more difficult it's gonna be to do. And then you keep your tomato straight up, and then you be careful with your fingers and you have yourself a dice tomatoes. You see now, if, if you were not in Florida, if you were in New Jersey, you would have a beautiful tomato that doesn't have all that white in there. You can certainly take the time to do this as well. And this is how you dice a tomato Concasse, classical way of doing it, or just simply like this for also a salad or a pasta, however you may want to do it. And that's the way I dice a, potato, a tomato. Well, I hope you enjoyed this very long video, folks. I did this for you. Let us know if you made it all the way to the end in a comment below. Remember, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. We'll see you in the next couple of days with another fantastic video.